Hello students. In the previous class, we had stopped at the illustration of the law of diminishing marginal utility. Now let's continue with that. Today, let's look into the consumer's equilibrium under this law of diminishing marginal utility. The law assumes rationality on the part of the consumer. Here, rationality implies the effort to maximize the satisfaction with limited resources. Consumer's equilibrium is the point of full satisfaction of a particular want completely. According to this law, the consumer attains equilibrium when the marginal utility is zero. Or in other words, we can say the total utility is maximum when the marginal utility is zero. This can be clearly seen in this diagram. In this diagram, we have drawn both the curves, namely the marginal utility curve and the total utility curve. MU represents the marginal utility curve and, the, and TU represents the total utility curve. In this graph, you see that the MU curve, that is the marginal utility curve, goes on diminishing throughout. It reaches to zero and then it becomes negative. That is the marginal utility curve. Whereas, you look at the total utility curve. We see that total utility increases at a diminishing rate in the beginning. Once the equilibrium is attained, total utility curve starts to decline. Just look at the total utility curve. It goes on increasing up to a particular point and then it begins to decline. And here, Though total utility is increasing, how is it increasing? It is increasing at a diminishing rate. That is why after a particular point, it begins to decline. So, the point where the total utility is the maximum and the marginal utility is zero, the equilibrium is attained. This is what we mean by consumer's equilibrium. The total utility will be maximum when marginal utility is zero. Based on this, we can understand the relationship between marginal utility and total utility. When marginal, you, you just look into the graph, then we can understand the relationship between marginal utility and total utility in a better way. We see that when the marginal utility diminishes, what happens to total utility? Total utility increases at a decreasing rate. When marginal utility reaches zero, what happens to total utility? Total utility reaches maximum. When marginal utility becomes negative, total utility begins to decline from the maximum point. 
This is the relationship that we see between marginal utility and total utility. Now, what are the exceptions to this law of diminishing marginal utility? When we strictly apply the criteria of the law with all the assumptions, there cannot be any exceptions to the law. However, if these assumptions are not strictly applied, it is possible to find some cases in which the law will not work. That is, in some cases, the, with increased stock of a commodity, what happens to marginal utility? Marginal utility also may increase. So, those cases where the margin, marginal utility increases with increased stock of a commodity, we call them as exceptions to the law of diminishing marginal utility. So, let us see what are these exceptional cases. One is collections. When we say collections, it could be collection of antique goods, coins, stamps or various hobbies. All these are exceptions to the law of diminishing marginal utility. Why do we say call them as exceptions? Because marginal utility tends to increase with every additional unit of collection of such things. That is why people are prepared to spend a great amount of money to acquire a special antique good or a stamp, a coin or a picture. But here we can observe the violation of the assumptions of homogeneity, meaning to say that though we call them as exceptions, the marginal utility here, that is in the case of those collection of things which are homogeneous. Now, for example, if you have a stamp collection as your hobby, what happens is that if you get the same kind of a stamp again and again, the marginal utility may not increase. But if you get a new variety of stamp, definitely what happens? The marginal utility will increase. So, this is considered to be one of the exceptions. And the second exception is with regard to the greed of the miser. It is argued that the greed of the miser increases with an increase in the stock of money. So, the marginal utility of money is believed to increase when the miser acquires more and more money. But even a miser has to spend his money at least for the satisfaction of his basic needs. His expenditure indicates that he gives more importance to satisfaction of wants rather than to acquisition of wealth. And the next exception is with the case of a drunkard. In the case of liquor, that is people who are habituated to the consumption of liquor, the marginal utility of an additional dose is believed to increase to a drunkard. This is true up to a certain stage. But after that stage, the marginal utility of liquor will also diminish even for a drink, drunkard. And the next case is with regard to music and poetry. A repeat hearing of music and poetry usually gives more satisfaction than the first one. But again here, we should remember, several repetitions of music and poetry is bound to decrease the marginal utility. Same thing goes with reading and writing. 
A scholar gets more and more satisfaction when he reads every additional book as he acquires more knowledge. Similarly, every writer's satisfaction increases when the number of his work increases. But here too, remember, homogeneity is violated. The satisfaction of the scholar increases due to the heterogeneity of the books. That is, if he reads the same book again and again, definitely the marginal utility is bound to decrease. Now let's look into the limitations of the law. The law of diminishing marginal utility is criticized for making some unrealistic assumptions. So what are these unrealistic assumptions? One, utility is not measurable. The law assumes the cardinal measurement of utility. Remember, utility is subjective. It is a mental phenomenon which is not easily quantifiable. So, critics raise objections against the law for making such unrealistic assumption of cardinal measurement of utility. According to them, utility can be just experienced but cannot be measured accurately. Then the other limitation, we always say other things are not always constant. Say we always quote ceteris paribus, which means other things are constant. But in reality, other things are not always constant. The law makes the famous assumption here. But other things like income, taste, fashion, prices of related goods, economic, geographical, various political conditions cannot remain constant for a long period. In that case, the operation of this law gets limited. And there are various other unrealistic assumptions like continuous consumption of the same commodity, homogeneity and rationality. Due to multiplicity of wants and scarcity of resources, a consumer seldom spends his whole income in one commodity under normal conditions. Consumer cannot be rational always as he is bound to be influenced by various other desires. So, even the assumption of homogeneity is, does not carry much validity in this law. Another limitation is that marginal utility of money is not constant. The law assumes that marginal utility of money is constant. But actually, the marginal utility of money does not remain constant. It is bound to increase when its stock increases. And the next is the existence of indivisible goods. The law cannot be applied in the case of Bulky goods like television sets, refrigerator, vehicle, house, cars, so and so on. What, we, what do you mean by this? When you say law of diminishing marginal utility, you cannot apply this law to the consumption of, for example, a television. Because people don't buy television such large goods one after the other. So the law is not applicable in the case of large goods, bulky goods, which cannot be divided into smaller parts. So these are some of the limitations with regard to the law of diminishing marginal utility. 
Now, what are the uses or significance of this law? It is the assumptions of the law which is criticized and not its essence. In fact, the law has got great economic significance. So let's look into some of the important uses of the law. First of all, this law of diminishing marginal utility acts as a foundation for various other laws of consumption, such as the law of equi-marginal utility and the law of demand. In fact, it is very easy to derive the law of demand from the law of diminishing marginal utility. Just look at the table. Deriving law of demand based on marginal utility. See, we have made two columns here. One, the units of the commodity, that is the number of bananas consumed, and the marginal utility for the various units. So you see that as more and more units, I mean when the price of the commodity is rupees 6, the number of banana consumed is 1. When it is 5, it is 2. When it is 4, it is 3 are consumed. So here, we are showing the marginal utility in terms of money. So the law of demand also tells us the same thing. What does the law of demand explain? The law of demand tells that the consumer is willing to demand more units at a lower price. Why is he willing to demand more units at a lower price? Because it is shown in terms of marginal utility. Since marginal utility of a good diminishes, the price a consumer is willing to pay for an additional unit also will be less. So, this law becomes a foundation for various other laws of consumption. And the next use or the significance is that it differentiates between value in use and value in exchange. Now what do you mean by value in use? Value in use refers to utility while value in exchange Sorry, value in use refers to utility, while value in exchange refers to the value in exchange of goods and services. Now, I'll explain to you in a better way with an example. For example, let's take the diamond water paradox. Now, we all know that diamond has no value in use but has got a great value in exchange. Whereas, water has got a great value in use but no value in exchange. The use value of water is very high. So its total utility is also very high. But since marginal utility is very less and diminishes very rapidly, its exchange value is very less. I hope it is clear. Water does not command high marginal utility as you consume more and more. Since this marginal utility is very less and diminishes very rapidly, 
this its exchange value is very less on the contrary though the use value of diamond is comparatively less its exchange value is very high and it diminishes very slowly total utility indicates the degree of intensity of what water with less marginal utility and abundance commands less exchange value meaning to say that there is no scarcity of water when there is no scarcity of water what happens to the exchange value the exchange value will be very less whereas diamond with high marginal utility and scarcity commands more exchange value so this difference can be understood only with the application of this law of diminishing marginal utility and the next area where this law is useful is in public finance marshall used this law to support progressive tax system under progressive tax system the rate of tax goes on increasing at a higher rate when income increases marshall also pleaded for such a system of public expenditure in which a larger proportion of tax revenue is going to be used for the benefit of the poor today the finance ministers are using this thinking as a more moral ground in framing a proper taxation policy higher take higher rate of tax on rich is always justified as the marginal utility of money decreases when stock increases so it is always justified that the rich should be taxed more when compared to the poor because for the rich the marginal utility of money decreases when stock increases and the next area where this law is useful is that it acts as a ethical base for socialism it is a system that is socialism is a system in which factors of production are owned by the society as a whole such a redistribution is always favored because of diminishing marginal utility of money when its stock is increasing that is why rich are taxed more the welfare benefits reach the poor more so the law of diminishing marginal utility is the foundation on which utility theory of demand is developed so this law has both theoretical and practical importance so law of diminishing marginal utility is the foundation of the entire demand theory which has got several practical applications in the next class let's discuss about the law of demand in detail that's all for now thank you